I officially call this meeting to order. Can you please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Let's bow our heads, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before you this day in gratitude and seeking your blessing upon those who lead our city, empower us to stand and serve our community. May every decision we make, that we respond and be generous to the public and our, and our staff. Help us guide or help us move forward, Lord, and guide us through all decisions makings that we make. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> We have a proclamation for Damas Catolicas Day, uh, Ms. Carrillo, please. Uh, yes, Mayor and City Council. Uh, with us today, uh, we have Ms. Judy de la Garza, who is president of the Damas Catolicas. I know Ms. Irma Perez is vice president, Selma Fermant is treasurer, and Car Carmela Martinez, no, I think Selma Fermant is secretary, and Carmela Martinez is treasurer. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas the Mission Damas Catolicas is a Catholic charitable organization first formed in 1928 at Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. Whereas the Mission Damas Catolicas, with a citywide membership, provide charitable support to Christian organizations in mission and surrounding areas, including to young men attending the seminaries to the priesthood. Whereas this year marks the 90th anniversary of the Damas Catolicas in mission, and whereas on June 23, 2018, the Mission Damas Catolicas will be celebrating their 90th anniversary with a religious service at Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church in mission. Now, therefore, we, the City Council of the City of Mission, hereby proclaim the day of June 23, 2018, as Damas Catolicas Day in Mission, and urge all citizens to join us in recognizing the dedication and hard work of all members. Proclaimed on this the 18th day of June, 2018. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the proclamation of Damas Catolicas Day. In this, I open it for a discussion. In any individuals want to discuss any item, any of the item? No, sir. Questions have been called for. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I present uh, Miss Judy. Wow. And we feel every year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's a special day for us, and we really appreciate the support. Do you mind taking a picture with the council and the mayor? Of Thank you. And accepting the proclamation. Next item that we have is the report from the Greater Mission Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Rossell. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. I'll begin with recent events. On June 12th, we celebrated Lone Star uh, Bank's newest location in Alton, and overall we had uh, over 200 people in attendance for this ribbon cutting. On June 14th, we hosted a ribbon cutting in partnership with uh, RG Vision at the Doubletree Hotel, uh, to which the proceeds 
uh, Ray's benefited the court appointed special advocates, also known as CASA. Um, and overall, we had 125 people in attendance for this uh, business mixer. In terms of upcoming events, uh, we have a free workshop this week uh, titled Grow Your Business with Google, scheduled for June 20th from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the Chamber of Commerce, and it is free of charge to our members. On Thursday, June 21st, we have a ribbon cutting scheduled for one of our newest members, E-Mattress. Uh, the ribbon cutting will take place at the member's place of business, which the address is 708 North Conway, Suite 3, Mission, Texas. On Tuesday, June 26th, uh, from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Chamber of Commerce, we will be hosting our new and potential member orientation uh, titled Pizza with the President. And then lastly, on today's agenda, on Saturday, July 14th, we will be hosting a ribbon cutting and grand opening for 5 by 5 Brewery at the Mission Seed Building beginning at 2 p.m. And, um, you know, we've had a really, really great response, so uh, certainly hope that some of y'all can join us for this uh, event. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosette. The City Departmental reports are in your packet. Any questions? Any comments? I move to, to accept as presented. Second. Motion and second that we accept the Departmental's report as presented. Is that open for further discussion? No further discussion. Questions have been called for. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Citizens' participation, is there anybody in the audience that would like to come uh, before us? You have uh, three minutes to discuss any issues that you would like to discuss with, uh, with us. Please uh, come to the mic and identify yourself, your name, and the address that you're from, for the record purpose. Yes, uh, my name is Jose Silva. Um, 3111 Tulipan Street, Mission, Texas. I'm from uh, here, Mission. Uh, I just wanted to kind of voice some opinions I had. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, and this is kind of something I want to know how we stand as a city. I know it's more of a federal issue, uh, but I've been looking up how I've been seeing reports how immigrant families are being separated from their children, uh, and they're planning to erect uh, tent housing and militia bases for these children. I just want to see how we would be tackling that problem uh, considering we have a large uh, Hispanic population. Unfortunately, we cannot respond to your issues. The law doesn't allow us. So we'll okay. just give you your three minutes and then uh, uh, that's, oh, all, that's I, all I can do for you for I for right my, now. I forfeit my time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. And go ahead, sir. Buenas tardes. Quiero expresar a nombre del municipio Ciudad Madero. Bueno, sí. Perdón. Quiero expresar a nombre del municipio Ciudad Madero, del presidente municipal, que estamos aquí con toda la comunidad de Misión, con todo el cabildo. Una felicitación al mayor Armando Caña y a todo su cabildo. Un profundo agradecimiento de todo el cabildo de Ciudad Madero y de toda la ciudadanía. Y así como eh, manifestar que estamos dispuestos a que se sigan estrechando los lazos de amistad, de colaboración, en todos los sentidos que están enmarcados en el convenio, eh, en, con el fin de que nuestras ciudades se superen día a día, tanto del sur de Tamaulipas como del sur de Texas. A todos ustedes, muchas gracias y muchas felicidades. Gracias. Gracias. Please state your name and address. My name is Robert, Robert Camilo González. I don't have much to say, only that I'm very proud of you, Dr. Ocaña, and all the rest of the board. Mr. Mart Mr. Garza, I've known you for a long time. And if they didn't tell you Happy Father's Day, maybe they forgot. But I'm telling you that. Yeah. And please take good care of Dr. Kanya. He's a very good man. Thank you. That's all I have to say. God bless you all. God bless you. 
We will. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else would like to address the council as a citizen participation? Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Luis Sanchez. This is an incredibly refreshing view for me and for a city. And I want to say that we're very proud of you, Dr. Kine, and everyone here. We look forward to all the great things that our city will do. We stand by you and each and every one of you. Thank you so much for representing our city and putting us on the map. Thank you. Right on. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> okay. We'll move on to our public hearings, planning and zoning recommendations. Mr. Acevedo. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1A is a public hearing for a rezoning of a 0.64 acre tract of land being the south 249 feet of the west 112 feet of the south 660 feet of lot 25-10 west addition to Sherry Land subdivision. The property is currently zoned AOI agriculture open interim and the request is to rezone it to C1 office building. The applicant is Dr. Jose Picasso and if the council is inclined to approve this rezoning request it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 13th 2018 the Planning and Zoning Commission held of held a public hearing to consider this rezoning request. The subject site is located a quarter mile west of Bryan Road along the northern side of Griffin Parkway. The surrounding zones include large lot single family R1A to the north. We have Concho Estates Phase 2. To the west and to the east we have agricultural property. Uh, I believe there's a vacant lot and a large estate style home to the east. The, to the south, we have single family residential. Uh, Dr. Carrera, I believe, lives on the south side. And uh, Dr. Picasso is wanting to rezone this to C1 so that he can practice. Uh, Dr. Picasso is a chiropractor and he wants to execute his practice from this location. Uh, the residence would continue to look like a residence, and uh, he, it's Dr. Picasso operates by himself. He doesn't have a large staff, and most of his clients are by appointment only. The only change that you would see is a, a four space parking facility in the front of the property. In talking to Dr. Picasso, the landscaping, the trees, everything is going to be staying as is. There was no opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval of this rezoning. Staff is recommending approval as is our city manager. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1A is now before you. Uh, this being a public hearing, we open it for the public, either for or against uh, the the item. And just come to the PA and present yourself, and state your name and uh, address, and give your cost. What's the uh, the building notice requirement, Martin? We notify a 200 foot radius from each corner of the property. And I believe he did uh, speak to some of the neighbors, one of them being um, Mrs. Schroeder, Schroeder. And, and she was she was okay with the request. Right, so Mr. Picasso as well, he went knocking on several doors. He made contact with the neighbors, advised them of what the project was going to entail. Uh, I believe Mr. Picasso is also here. Mr. Picasso, I don't know if you have any comments uh, to add, but uh, my understanding is, is there is no opposition at the meeting and also the neighbors are are okay with that. But it's 200 uh, feet around the radius. Yes, sir. Sir, you want to address the, the public hearing? Go ahead, sir. Either for or against yourself. Obviously, maybe for because <laughs> you're the applicant. But but come up and uh, state you. Good afternoon. Mayor, congratulations. Thank first you. of all, I want to congratulate other city council. Um, this is what I want to do. I want to convert this uh, house into a commercial building. So with your permission, I will be more than happy. Anybody else? For or against? Public hearing. Anybody else? For or against? Do I, I move for approval I'll, as presented. I would like to second that motion. We have a motion to approve as presented and second by Mr. Plata. Uh, and this is uh, open it for council discussion. Any council discussion? No council discussion. Then at, at this time, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign.
motion carries, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And approved. That would be Ordinance 4643. Approving Ordinance 4643. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We open the, the next. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1B is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a home occupation. This is for a registered home provider. A registered home provider is the, is the state of Texas's new name for a daycare facility from home. They're calling it a registered home provider. This is at 2003 West 40th Street, Lot 68, Taurus Estates, Number 9, Phase 3 Subdivision. The property is zoned R1, single family residential, and the applicant is Ileana Fraire. And if the council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 13, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit request. The subject site is located near the, near the Hillcrest Drive and West 40th Street intersection along the south side of West 40th Street. If approved, the applicant will be converting a living room and one of the bedrooms into the daycare facility. The hours of operation are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. The, the applicant and one other um, employee will be manning this operation. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval of this condition use permit <coughs> subject to a one-year reevaluation to monitor this new child care facility. We're also asking that the applicant be DHS certified and that they comply with the home occupation Daycare. portion of our zoning code and that they obtain a business license. Our city manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing item. Item 1.1B is now before you. I open it for a public hearing for the public for or against. Please approach the bench for or against. Please state your name and address, please. Good afternoon. Congratulations, Mayor. Thank you. And council. As an educator, these are really great ideas. Um, to boost the economy by taking care of children. However, many of those homes are not, uh, maybe they don't take special children because they're not compliant. I just want the council to be more aware that you will have more traffic, you will have more noise, uh, you will have more uh, trash that has to be disposed. And I just want to make sure that all these children are taken care of properly, especially if you have kids who are autistic, uh, who have communication problems, who have the pacing and the running, and they, that those children with special needs do not be excluded. And that's all. Other than that, if they can plan, and they're in there to help everybody, I have no problem. But I just want to caution that only because a person is registered does not mean that the environment is appropriate for children with special needs. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else for or against? Anybody else for and against? Anybody else for or against? And this is an open for further discussion from the uh, council. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, the, the request. Um, describes the living room as being part of the facility or the living room in one of the one of the bed one of the bedrooms yes um, they'll be using the kitchen as well to make their the food okay. prep preparations but uh, yeah primarily the children will be either in the living room or in one of the bedrooms but somebody going to be living at the house also or, or the applicant and her husband live at the house the husband works during the day so he's not going to be there during the day it'll just be the the applicant and another person that are going to be the only employees for this operation is the applicant here she was notified of the meeting i'm not sure if he's here. i don't i don't believe she is I don't know if this is an issue, but I, I think this is the first time we've seen where the actual daycare facility is going to be the l living room of the home. Um, in the past, it's always, uh, for, like for the a, most part, it's the garage that the they, garage convert they convert into convert, the... But right. you did say that they were certified with the, with the state of Texas. That's one of the department. conditions of approval that okay. they bring us their certifications. Had they brought that in or not? No, the first step is to see whether or not the city will allow them to operate, and then they'll seek their certifications. 
Because of the expenditure that comes along with it. Because of the expenditures, yes. yes. There's right. trainings in certain expenditures. Right. Yes. I feel a little uncomfortable that the applicant is not here. I mean, so it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know how much priority this is for her. So I, if there's no other further discussion, I would like to deny the request. I'm going to second that motion. Um, I'm again. I'm uncomfortable with the with the um, living room being the the center part of the of the daycare facility. We have a motion on the floor and, and second to deny the uh, the conditional use permit for a home occupation reg registered registered. I will open for further discussion for the other city council individuals for input. Or we can table it. <coughs> or we can table it for next week or whatever. See if she'll show up, but yeah. I'd like to ask her a couple of questions. My concern is in the living room, there's glass tabletops. Yeah. There's going to be children there. That's a safety concern for me. Um, and is this something I'd like that. For her to be here. Is this something that, that the state will also have a concern with? Like, they'll probably say, why the living room or yeah, why? Yeah, this is the way the house is now. I mean, I'm sure that once the state goes in there, they're going to have they'll, certain guidelines that they yeah. must follow. Any other discussions? Uh, um, Mr. Acevedo, I have a question. How many homes like this do we have? Um, people that have this type of business in their homes that provide daycare services? We have, I mean, just most, the most recent one that comes to mind is on 42nd Street, which is two blocks north. Uh, Selene Garcia, I believe, was the applicant who has a house, but she converted the garage into the daycare facility, like Ms. Garza was, oh, okay. was mentioning. Um, but we do have these home occupations that pop up periodically. They open, sometimes they close them after a couple of years. Um, but we do have several throughout the city. Um, I'd like to also table it and have her come in because if we say no to it completely, how long will it take for her but to come back and apply? She would have to come in, she would have to wait six months before she reapplies. Oh, okay. But there's some motion on the table. I was going to say, we have a motion on the table and, and we have a, unless you're making a motion to, to, to or Mr. you're Martin withdrawing your, your motion, Mr. Plata, you, you, you keeping your motion? Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm very concerned this is going to be a children's place, and I know the table and all of that can be moved, but I just, and maybe for the future, you know, anybody that is applying for some type of permit, then I think it's important for them to come. I mean, nobody is going to advocate for their project like their own, mm -hmm. like themselves, so I think it's, it's important that they come. I don't hear a motion to table, right? Well, there's a motion to deny, <clears throat> but if that's going to be, I guess, rescinded, I'll move to table. We have a motion to table. Second. Second. Well, we'll now, legal. Do we need to if rescind If we already entertain a regular motion, and we have a motion on top to table, which one per the, per the motion to table takes precedence over any other motion on the table, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And any concerns by the council to go ahead and call for uh, for a vote to table? No, all, sir. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. This item is tabled. Okay. Okay. Open the 1.1C conditional use permit drive through to convenience store uh, public hearing. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1C is a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a drive through convenience store. This is at 1001 West Expressway 83, being lots 35 and 36 of Freeway Subdivision Unit 3. The property is owned C3, and the applicant is Gerardo Martinez. And if the Council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. On June 13, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider this conditional use permit request. The site is located at the southwest corner of Expressway 83 and San Pedro Street. This uh, CUP was originally approved on March 12th of 2014. Uh, then and then it was approved several other times. However, the applicant, or Mr. Martinez, never did open his uh, drive-through business for financial reasons. And uh, the applicant has alerted staff that he's ready to proceed now. 
and his hours of operation are every day 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. with two employees manning the operation. Uh, parking is existing. There's seven parking spaces. And then if we factor in the three cars that can stack, we have a total of 10 parking spaces where eight are required for a business of this size. There was no public opposition during the P&Z meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval subject to a one-year re-evaluation. Uh, we're also asking that they install additional landscaping, that they uh, restripe the parking lot facility, and that they comply with all building, fire, health, and sign codes, and that they obtain a business license. Our city manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1C is now before you. Is anybody in favor or against this request? Is there anybody in favor or against this request? Is there anybody in favor or against this request? In this, I entertain the motion. I move to approve as presented, but I, I will have a question. Okay. Second. We have a motion, second, and I'll open it for discussion. The question that I have is, um, uh, it does say must install additional landscaping, but that's kind of vague. So what is, what are you actually going to require other than just additional? Or to clean this lot. lot has very limited uh, right-of-way or property because most of it is state right-of-way along the expressway. But we would like to, for the applicant to install uh, some shrubs or maybe plant a tree um, something to make the area look better. Right now, as you can see, it's just grass, and uh, it's even, um, I guess, spreading over onto the paved concrete area. So we, we just want, to, want the applicant to make it look a little bit nicer. But shouldn't we give them some, a better direction as far as what is actually... <coughs> right, Jaime, if, we if could, so... We if can I'm, specify. Well, if I'm not mistaken, you do have an ordinance in place that specifies, as per the square footage of the lot, how many... Trees are required, how many uh, yes. uh, brush are required, and so forth, right? It's a percentage of greenery that's required. It's 30% on a commercial lot, and uh, it, it's, it's not very specific as to how many trees. It just is a combination of shrubs and trees. Okay, so when we present these items to the council, make sure that based on that ordinance, we give that recommendation attached to the condition of the of the permit. Okay. And if you need the ordinance to be adjusted, you know, we meet with us and we'll, we'll bring back the ordinance to add, uh, add more to it if, uh, if you need that, uh, that leverage. Sounds good. But more ah. so for the applicant because the, the, you know, they need to be, you know, well aware of what, what is needed and expected. Yes. Okay. I think it would be a good idea from now on to bring something like a house going to look like and, I mean, maybe pictures or something. Some type of exhibit. Um, I mean, how they need to really try to sell the project to the council and pictures fix thousands of words, so. Yes, sure, we could, we could require those. Right, and the other thing, Mr. Planta, just to add to that, is that we don't release a conditional use permit until those conditions are met, right? And so, however, they don't do the implementation of the landscaping because it, it takes um, an investment and so they want to make sure they secure the permit before they actually make the investment, but the actual permit is not released until the, the actual um, project is complete. What about lighting? They don't have any parking lighting. The only lighting that they have is in the form of uh, some lights on the walls. Um, it, it, it wasn't a, a requirement at the P&Z meeting, but if, if the council would want to install some some parking lights, we could definitely request additional lighting for the, for the Do we have area. any ordinance on that? On Can we Most ask them to do it? are addressed during the building permit of the actual facility, um, not during the CUP, but uh, this is going to be a drive-through business, so the majority of the, of the customers are going to be coming in through Pedro Street and exiting it onto the frontage. I don't foresee too many people parking uh, for this particular business. But being a conditional use permit, we can request. You can impose that condition, correct. Then I, I would like to um, add additional lighting for the parking lot. So noted. Second. 
Any other discussion? Any other questions? Call for a vote of uh, adoption of Ordinance 4644. Yes, sir. 4644, approving 1.1C for one for one year. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item, 1.1D, one, 1 .1 conditional use permit in and out drive through convenience store. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 1.1D is a public hearing for a conditional use permit of in and out drive through convenience store. This is at 1401 North Conway Avenue, being lots 7 and 8 of Block 230, Mission Original Town Site. And if the Council is inclined to approve this conditional use permit request, it would require the adoption of an ordinance. The Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing to consider the renewal of this conditional use permit. Uh, this is an existing drive-through service uh, business that has been in operation since 2014. The most recent approval came in April 27 of 2015, at which time a three-year conditional use permit was granted. The hours of operation for the drive-through business are Sunday through Friday from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m and Saturday from 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. There's, there's a total of four employees that man this operation. There was no public opposition during the PNZ meeting. The board unanimously recommended approval. Staff is recommending approval for another three-year period. Our city manager is also recommending approval. This is a public hearing. Item 1.1D is now before you. I open it for anybody in favor or against this request. Anybody in favor or against this request? Anybody in favor or against this request? This I open it for. Yes, sir. You have. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come in, sir. The map or where this is exactly located? Uh, what street is that? It's located on Conway 14. uh, and 14th Street. It's at Northwest Corners. Yes, sir. I move for approval as presented. Second, Mayor. I would just have one question. What were the hours of operation? The, the hours the, of operation? Uh, let me accept the motion and the motion and the second. Yes. And then I can open it, open it for discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Plata. What were the hours of operations for the one on 495 Griffin Parkway? This one yes, is till no 1 o'clock. The one on 495? I believe it was from, from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, eight hours and this one is from uh, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. and Saturday from 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. Thank you. Any other discussion? No other discussion? Adoption of Ordinance 4645 approving 1.1D. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Seville. We'll move over to disposition of minutes 2.0. First, we have the City Council meetings of May 29, 2018. Mayor, any, I'm going to any approve. changes or deletions on the on the minutes? Uh, second. We have a motion to accept the uh, and second to accept the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Moving over to 3.0, acknowledgement receipts of minutes uh, for Parks and Recreation Board, January 9th, 2018, Mission Civil Service Commission, May 10th, 2018, and Planning and Zoning Commission, May, May 23rd, 2018. Mayor, I move to approve the acknowledged receipt of minutes. Second. M motion and second to approve the acknowledgement receipts of the minutes as stated. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Moving to 4.0 approval and authorization. So uh, I call for item 4.1 preliminary plan approval of 6 Western Vegas uh, subdivision. Mr. Acevedo. Thank you, Mayor Council. Item 4.1 is a preliminary plan approval of 6 Western Vegas subdivision. This is a 20 acre tract of land in our ETJ. The developer is Texas Ranch LLC and the engineers Alfonso Quintanilla of Quintanilla Headley and Associates. This uh, is th this is a 12 
lot, single family residential lot subdivision located along the east side of Western Road and the north side of Mile 6 North Road. The water CCN belongs to Agua Sud and uh, the developers proposing the use of septic tanks for these lots. All of them exceed the minimum half acre requirement. And uh, this item was previously um, not tabled, but I believe we took no action on this item at the last meeting because we were waiting for an approved drainage report. Uh, the drainage report was included in the packet that was uh, sent out to the mayor and the council. And um, it was approved by the Hidalgo County Drainage District. And uh, this item was approved by the PNZ. Staff is recommending approval, as is our city manager. Item 4.1 is now before you. I move to approve the preliminary plat as presented. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve the, uh, the preliminary plat, 6 Western Vegas subdivision. Uh, I, I have a question, if you don't mind. Uh, on the drainage report, is it reviewed by anybody from our city, and our city says it's, it's okay also? Our city engineer, um, J.P. Terrazas, reviews all the drainage reports that come into this. And he says it's okay for this one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say sign. Motion carries. 4.2, authorization to purchase two Myovision Scots and Connect bundle traffic counters. Uh, Chief Dominguez. Good evening, Mayor of City Council. Item 4.2 is authorization to purchase two Myovision Scout and Connect bundle traffic counters via sole source vendor, being Myovision Technologies, Inc. The purchase of this equipment will allow the city of Mission to utilize the most updated technology in gathering highway traffic data within our city. The information gathered will provide us with statistics for improved roadway design, congestion management, and roadway safety. The total amount of the project of, uh, cost is 10233 Staff and city manager recommend approval for the purchase of, of the equipment, sir. Do I have any discussion from the council? I move for approval as presented. Second. Uh, motion and second to approve the authorization to purchase the items presented by uh, Chief Dominguez. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Call for item 4.3, sign code variance request to allow a 90 980 square foot sign. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Item 4.3 is a sign code variance request to allow a 980 square foot sign at 2309 East Expressway 83, being lot one of Burt Ogden Mazda subdivision, as requested by the Burt Ogden Auto Group. Uh, Bert, the the Burt Ogden is located at the northwest corner of Sherry and Expressway 83, and uh, one of the things that they want to do is instead of spending in television advertising is they want to focus more on um, ground signs. And what Bird Ogden is proposing is that they're proposing to install where the arrow is pointing to uh, in, a, in a green area between the Bird Ogden dealership and the Chase Bank, is that they're proposing a 39 foot 6.2 inch sign by 24 feet 3.3 quarter inch sign, which equates to 980 square feet. And uh, currently, the city code allows a ground pole sign to be up to 800 square feet. So this one exceeds it by 180 square feet. As far as the height of the sign, uh, being that it is along the expressway corridor, they're allowed to go as high as 80 feet. And uh, what, what they're proposing is 75 feet. So it's, it doesn't need a variance on the height, but it will need a variance if they want to construct it as presented at 980 square feet. This is a, this item was not presented to the, to the PNZ. This is an item that comes straight to the city council. Uh, staff is recommending approval as is our city manager. Item 4.3 is now before you. Any uh, questions from any other council members? Is this a three-sided sign? It's a three-faced sign, correct. Uh, they want people to see it from all directions. So, okay, so that's basically why it's over the square foot. No, actually that's per face. You're allowed to have 800 oh, square feet per face, per and face. Uh, it's a three-faced sign. So. Yes. Oh, wow. That's a big sign. It's really, really <laughs> big. Yes. Yes, but we need to, we need those kind of signs at uh, at the expressway because uh, people are passing from from Palmview to McAllen, and we need to pull them over so they can stop in Mission 
and shop in Mission. So, so that's the idea. Move for approval, Mayor. Second. So motion and second uh, to approve uh, the sign ordinance variance for Bird Ogden and uh, open it. Any, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Same sign. Motion carries, and uh, Mr. Osorio, I just, I just want to let you know that uh, it, to take this uh, standard and put it into our ordinance so other companies that want to do the signs, they don't have to come to us. You know, they just go straight to, to the permit and we can uh, begin to, okay. to well, that's gonna streamline, streamline the... Uh, An amendment to the current sign yes. ordinance. Right, so we'll look at the ordinance and we'll bring it back to the council. And yes. Okay. Just well, take good. take the standard from there and, and and put it in the and put it into the ordinance so we can uh, begin to be a little bit more competitive uh, out on the expressway. You know. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, sir. I'm calling for a, a approval of resolution 1555 of the city of Texas approving cooperative with the uh, city served by AAP, Mr. Pettis. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, the item 4.4 is approval of the resolution of the city of Mission to cooperate with the cities uh, served by AAP to review AAP Texas uh, adjustment in energy efficiency cost recovery factor. On June the 1st, 2018, AAP filed a uh, an application with the Public Utility Commission to adjust the 2019 energy efficiency cost recovery factor. This resolution authorizes the city to join with uh, cities and served by AEP to include and retain the law firm of uh, Lloyd Goslink and Consultants to negotiate with the company, uh, make recommendations to the city regarding reasonable rates and direct any necessary administrative proceedings or court litigations associated with the appeal of this application filed with the PUC. Uh, staff recommendation at this time is approval of this resolution as presented. Any discussion from the, any other council members? Move for approval. Second. We've got a motion and a second to approve the resolution 1555. This I open it for, for voting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. 4.5 authorizes uh, authorization to award bids. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. I come before you to present item 4.5, authorization to award bid to Holmont LLC for the expansion of the Ubal building, Upper Valley Art League. We received six bid responses. Staff is recommending to award Holmont LLC who's the lowest responsible bidder meeting all the specifications in the amount of $24,000. Staff and city manager recommends approval. Any discussion from any of the council members? Do I hear a motion? I move to approve. Second. Mo motion and second to approve as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I also have item 4.6. Authorization to execute first one year renewal option for seal code payment services on as needed basis. Renew with valid striping first one year renewal option at 0% increase, which stays the same as 15 cents per square foot. Orders will be placed on as needed basis. Staff and city manager recommends approval. At this time, I open it for discussion by any other council persons. So, zero increase. That's correct, zero increase. Yes, sir. I move to approve. Second. Motion to approve and second to authorize the execution of first one year renewal option for seal code payment services. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Ms. Munguia, 4.7. Mr. Munguia, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, no, I'm sorry. Mayor and Council. I'm here representing Noemi from the yes. HR Department. Uh, we're seeking authorization to solicit bids for stop loss to authorize C City's agent GEF Financial Group to solicit bids. This insurance will cover all costs exceeding the city deductible and all claims for medical and prescription services. Staff and city manager recommends approval. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. I have I have a question. Uh, as far as uh, uh, 
How many companies uh, participated in, in this process? Four uh, bits? Yes. Uh, let me see if I have that here. We do have a few. Let me see. It's just general numbers, two, three, five, you know. <laughs> Maybe like five. Five, five, we five and five. seven. Yes. yes. Did we had input from our employees before, before we set it out for bits? From employees, no. No. We use historical no. data to determine uh, what's uh, the, the to determine the scope of the service, uh, the scope that we're going to solicit for bids on. And how about the scope of needs? The or scope. The, uh, needs. Needs. The needs for. We we can definitely take that into consideration uh, this time around uh, to determine that factor. This is for how long? This will be. This is for one, for one year. One year. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have. I still have another one. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we're seeking authorization to solicit proposals for uh, employee assistance program services, which is EAP provides counseling services for all employees on personal and work-related issues at no cost to the employee. One-year contract with two renewal options have been exhausted, and we're seeking authorization to solicit RFP. Staff and city manager recommends approval. Any input from or discussion from the council? No, Mayor, I move to approve. So we have an, a motion to approve the EAP. Do I hear a second? Second. Second has been called for in this. Uh, I open it for further discussion. Mayor, I have a question. Go ahead. So, Nereida, are you all, you're opening up for bids to get another company to come in? Right. Okay. Yes. What are we doing to offer to make sure that every single city employee know what this stands for? Because I still have employees that don't right. even know EAP. EAP provides uh, posters to us. We always communicate with the employees as far as when they first come in during enrollment, during new hire orientation. We send out emails. Uh, we ask department directors to post, you know, flyers so that they can have the information. So we try to promote it, you know, as uh, much as we can. How about each director? Each director doesn't promote the EAP? Right. Yes, they yes. Do? We do send uh, this information the to the directors, yes, so that they can go ahead and promote it as well. And we do have directors that call us asking for information. That's good. That's yes. good. And it's also offered through open enrollment. Right. Good. So my last question would be, how many employees have used this agency in the past a year? We do have reports. Of course, this is completely confidential. There's different uh, types of counseling counseling that they offer. So for every type of counseling per se, there's different numbers. But I can tell you that maybe, and really I can give you an exact number right now because it all depends on the type, but maybe like 10 employees per case. It all depends on what um, the situation is that they're calling for. Okay, so I would just like to see more of us working together to make sure every employee knows of this because I think right. it's very little. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, right now with mental health being at the forefront, a lot of families have a different types of issues and I'd like city employees to know that this is a service offered to them for free Correct. and their family members. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And the key word is free, you know? Yes. That's the key word. Yes. You know, so no further discussions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. 4.9, authorize the purchase of 200-96 gallon garbage carts. Mr. G. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. Authorize to purchase 296 gallon garbage carts VI HGAC, contract number RC01-18 for the City Sanitation Department. The cost will be used for inventory and future growth of the city. Estimated cost for 1,232 cents. Type and city manager recommend approval. Open it for discussion by the council. Move for approval. Second. So first and second. And this is open it for further discussion and questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. 4.10, authorization to accept the uh, irrigation controller, Benson. Mr. Ben Benson. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. 
I have before you item 4.10 is an authorization to accept irrigation controller. The South Texas Sales Manager for uh, Weathermatic Irrigation Systems wishes to donate one Smart Link bundle, SL, excuse me, one Smart Link SL 4800 bundle, which is to be used at uh, Leo Pena Placita Park. The estimated cost of this bundle is $1,200. Staff and City Manager recommend approval. That's nice of them. I move for approval. Second. Okay. First and second to uh, authorize the acceptance of the irrigation controller. Open it for discussion by the council. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Benson. 411, authorization to award bids for replacement of a 10-inch high service pump. Mr. Salinas, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, City Council members. I come before you a second authorization to award bids uh, for the repayment of a 10-inch high service pump and motor at the North Water Treatment Plant. The City of Mission has received six uh, bid responses for this project. Staff recommends awarding to Fell Glow Inc., DBA International Machine Shop, who is the lower responsible bidder meeting all specification. Uh, the bid amount was of $60,000 to replace this pump and motor. Uh, staff and City Manager recommend approval. I open it for discussion. But any uh, council have any questions or anything? Were there more bidders on this? More what? I'm sorry. Sir? People that bid on the project. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, five, five bid responses, including the the low bidder who is uh, international yes. machine shop. Yes, sir. Any other questions? I move for approval. Motion second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Salina 4.12, authorization to solicit the bids for storm drainage and street improvements. Yes, sir, uh, Mayor, City Council members. Next agenda, next agenda item 4.12 was the authorization to solicit bids for storm drainage and street improvements at Anne Marie <laughs> Drive, uh, Maranel Lane. That's from Bryan West uh, to the golf course, which is the, the cul-de-sac. Project improvements include storm drainage, curb and girder replacement and adjustments, utility adjustment, and asphalt overlay. Uh, the, the approximate construction cost for this project will be at $450,000. Staff and city manager recommend approval. Discussion by the council. I'll move for approval, Mayor. Second. M approval. First and second to approve. This I open it for further discussion in case there's any uh, discussion. No discussions then. Well, just a real quick. Um, the plan for Bryan Road between Old 83 and 495, will this kind of tie in with that project? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, once uh, we get to the next uh, next budget, we're planning to solicit for bids also for the Bryan uh, stone drainage and, and road reconstruction and road from business. business 83 to 495. That's, uh, that's coming up on our next uh, fiscal year uh, budget, yes. Is there any road reconstruction for... For Marinel? There's sections of uh, reconstruction, yes, that are in, in bad shape. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 4.13 authorization to award bid for copper software <coughs> for the no north and south water plant, treatment plant. Yes, Salinas. Yes, sir, Mayor, uh, City Council members, item 4.13 is the authorization to award bid uh, for copper sulfur for the north and south water treatment plants. The City of Mission has received five bid responses for this chemical. Staff is recommended to award to Chemtrade Chemicals US LLC, who is the lowest responsible bidders, uh, bidder meeting all specification. The estimated cost uh, for this chemical is of $150,000 uh, uh, for a one year term. Orders will be placed on a as needed basis. Staff and city manager recommend approval. Discussion by the council. I move for approval. Second. Motion to approve and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 0.14 authorization to enter into an interlocal agreement with the National Cooperative Pur Purchasing Alliance. Mr. Belmars. Yes, sir. I bring before you item 4.14 authorization to enter into an, an interlocal agreement with National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance NCPA. Future acquisitions of technology, office, facilities, construction, athletics, transportation, furniture, food services, and environmental uh, are offered under this cooperative mm -hmm. pursuant to, to the Interlocal Cooperation Act, Chapter 791, Subchapter 271C 
of the Texas government code or local government that purchases goods or services under this cha subchapter satisfies any state law requiring the local government to seek competitive bids for the purchase of goods or services. Staff and C manager recommend approval. Open for discussion for the other council. Mayor, I move to approve. Motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And don't forget that when you use it, to call our local vendors. Yes, sir. Give the courtesy, the courtesy call to our local vendors, please. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> 4.15 authorizations for surplus machinery and equipment, Ms. Vela. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. Item 415 is the authorization to surplus attached machinery and equipment. The attached list contains items that staff has determined is no longer used to the city. It is uh, minor equipment and seized equipment from the police department. Surplus items will be sold at online auction and those items with no resale value will be disposed. Staff and city manager recommend approval. Any discussion by any other council persons? Move for approval, Mayor. Do I hear a second? second? A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Budget amendment, hotel motel fund. Villa. Item 416 is the approval of the attached budget amendment. The budget amendment is in the hotel motel fund. It is a reclassification of $24,000, which is necessary for the Uval building expansion project. Funds will be reclassified to capital outlay since the project will be handled by the City of Mission. I move for approval. Second. Motion to approve and second. And just I open up for further discussion by any other, other council members. No discussion, then uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Moving right along to 5.0 unfinished business, uh, 5.1 authorization to enter into reclaimed water use agreement with Cimarron Country Club for irrigation purposes. Uh, it is tabled. Uh, I would like to recommend to the uh, to the council that we take no action here, so the table uh, item can be uh, in, can, uh, fizzle out. And uh, and I would like to meet and have a workshop. A workshop so uh, that uh, Mr. City Manager set up a workshop so so the project can be introduced to the new uh, City Council person and at the same time introduced to all of us in a refresher where we're at and where we're going with it in the future. Any questions from the other council members? Okay, recommendation. I move for good? Okay, then I'll call for the next, uh, the routine items. City Manager's comment. Mayor, just to make a comment at your request, we are live streaming on Facebook as we speak. If you look at the camera right there, and that is just to continue the transparency in our government. And I want to thank Charlie and the media department for helping us put that up. So thank you. Thank you, Charlie. And from the Mayor's comment is uh, welcome the public. Welcome the public on board. You know, we're going to uh, transparent as much as we can that uh, and uh, what is legal for us to do, you know, because I know there's items that we have to go to executive session that we cannot do. But people understand that we're a city of law and order, you know, and we do have lawyers on board now in the council right. as well as on staff. So um, the uh, I want to thank the citizens of Mission for giving me this opportunity to be here before you, and this blessing that I that I received and, and that I, that I will cherish for the rest of my life. You know, as far as that is concerned, coming in for a long long life dream as a from South Mission, growing up that I, one of these days I wanted to grow up to be a, a mayor, and here it is, I'm here. So thank you, uh, and I also want to share this agenda item agenda item with my my colleagues our city council to that I will open for any city council person to make uh, any comment and I would recommend for our, our legal to look at adding 6.3 city council comments there on the item uh, when the first uh, the first day that I became a city councilman I said hey, where, where do I talk you know? <laughs> and uh, you know and uh, if it's uh, whatever we need to do as far as uh, to get get it in there so we can 
legally uh, comply and allow our, our all our council members before we leave on the day uh, uh, on, the, on the day of the uh, the meeting that they will be able to to make their their comments of what whatever they want. So without further ado, I'll start from my right and go all the way to the left. Are you sure you don't want to co uh, start with our newly appointed Gus Martinez? No, uh, because he'll probably talk for six hours. So. No, no. Okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, Is that true? 30 seconds. But if you want to give okay. him the courtesy, yes, yeah, let's give him the courtesy. I'll, I'll give you the courtesy. I'll be the last one. Mr. Gus uh, Martinez, welcome. Thank you, Eric Kenley. Uh, really, I have an announcement. Um, as, a, as a board member on the Education Foundation, the Mission CISD, we are having a concert at the Mission Event Center July the 5th. We're bringing down the spasmatics. The tables are 750 bucks uh, for, you know, if you want to get a table. The tickets are $35 on their own. Um, so all the money raised will go towards the foundation, which, which gives scholarships to students and grants to teachers. And we're closing in about a quarter million dollars after our fourth year here. So come check out the spasmatics, call an Uber, call a Lyft. Um, and that's all I have, except I have a question there. Can I bring my dogs to the city council meeting? Uh, no. sure. uh, I'll have Mr. Garza back there, Homer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other than that, uh, thank you, Mayor. It's a privilege to be here. Ms. Garza? Yes. Um, I know that the Amigos del Valle approached the city to uh, provide uh, free um, lunch for uh, children under 18 years of age um, at our Amigos del Valle site. Good. I just want to make sure that that has been um, that information has been dispersed. We're participating, ma'am. Uh, we have uh, Chief Dominguez and his staff that has been participating uh, the last week or two already, Chief. Yes, we started last week. We did last week. How did that go? Good. Good. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, back in the day, we used to provide meals at the Boys and Girls Club sites. Are we still doing that? Well, we do we have so. it through the through the summer program. Mr. Evelo, you want to address that? Yes. Yeah, we do have it through the school district. Um, we're running in, in three different sites. So Which sites are those? 600, uh, 600 breakfasts every day mm. and 600 lunches. And which sites are those provide the, those meals provided? Yeah, we have the sites. No, no, no. Which sites? Which sites? Sites. It's going to be the main unit at Conway. Yes. Mayberry, uh, CWB, and uh, Sharon and Mamre. Okay. So we're providing all. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm not selling no tickets or no, <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, um, and no activities right now. But I just want to congratulate Dr. Kanye. I'm here to continue working. There is a lot to do in the city, and we must work in unity to provide the best services, uh, the best resources to the citizen submission. We must work together. We're not always going to agree, but it's good to disagree, to be able to use everybody's expertise to bring what's best for the citizen submission. I think all of us have that in our hearts and in our minds that we are elected to serve and to keep nothing but the best from ourselves. Thank you and congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Mayor and City Council, there's not a better appropriate time than the present for our city to evaluate its current condition. More importantly, how we can do even better for our citizens' admission. Um, as we serve both as members of this council and our public employees of the City of Mission, and while we can fill this room with many, many accomplishments, I represent the residents of this city, and I say that we can do more for all of them. It is my recommendation that we obtain an independent performance and management review of all departments, which will also include an employee survey providing feedback and direction that they obtain from their supervisors and directors. Furthermore, the study shall identify areas in which improvements may be needed for innovation and technology to better serve our residents. Professional service should be obtained immediately so that a report can be given to us as council and you, Mayor, within 90 days. And, and I'll take it a little further. Uh, we'll take that those results and, and use them as our needs assessment for uh, for our. We want to create a 10-year plan for the city of Mission, a comprehensive 10-year plan for the city of Mission. So, just FYI, and I'm, I'm meeting with also with the uh, 
the three school boards that serve the city of Mission, uh, the school board, Sheridan School Board, Mission School Board, and uh, La Jolla ISD School Board. I've already confirmed two school boards that we're going to meet. We are going to, in, or, in order for us to meet together, uh, even though even though we don't, uh, we're not going to do any decisions. We're just going to do a workshop. We still have to post. We will let you, the public know. You know, we will po be posting and when and where and, and how is, uh, how it's going to be done. It is something that we, I don't think we, it's ever been done in the city of Mission before, where, where the city government uh, gets together formally with the, with the three school boards. And we're going to be at the same time because each school district has different issues, different problems. But we want to we want to be able to offer our services that we have in this, in the city that will enhance the educational process of every, all their children of the three school district. Keeping in mind that their children that go to their schools are our sons and daughters of our citizens of mission. You know, so uh, at the end of the day, uh, we want them to be gainfully employed when they turn 18, and uh, and keep paying taxes and mission, so we don't have to even have the thought of raising taxes and mission. You know, uh, I will. Uh, my official comment is that I'm going to recommend to the council that we freeze the tax rate for for the next. Uh, next fiscal year. So that will give an idea to Mr. Garza, who is already starting with the department heads of no is about 70% complete on it, that he already knows what kind of revenue that he's going to be working with. And so we can plan accordingly and get a better mission on a daily, daily uh, operations as far as that is concerned. So. I move to adjourn. Second. I was going to say, at that time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. In a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? None. <laughs> Stay. Okay. Motion passes and yes. Godspeed. Stay seated. Thanks.